Hey, welcome to part uh, part three of uh, North Park Ranch, and uh, we finished this thing in this 30-minute session. So I was so delighted the way this came out, and what we worked on today was small brushes and with detail. So um, I go through all that step by step, and uh, a lot was accomplished. I really think it looks pretty good. Um, so, let's get started with the painting, but first, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, let's get started. All right, bye. Hello and welcome to part three of North Park Ranch. Wow, a lot was accomplished in uh, one and two. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing done in the next 30 minutes with you. Okay, so I've laid out my paints, I've got my turp, I've got my paper towels, I've got my trusty coffee here, and I am ready to take a look at this and get ready to get started. Okay. Um, before I even started this painting, I did a you know, a sketch like I talk about. And I just want to reiterate, I think that's a pretty important thing to do. It just gives my brain a chance to kind of start laying things out of where that objects and shape should be. It just gets me going and I can solve some of the problems by, you know, uh, doing sketches on a sketchbook. All right. Oh boy, I'm probably missing some paints here like Naples. Let me get my Naples out. Jeez, I thought I had my, my stuff laid out so well, but there's my Naples. You know, I use Naples a lot, not on itself, but I use it as a mixer a lot into other things for, you know, warm stuff. It's kind of a light, warm color. And uh, where I use my light Viridian down here, I use it for, you know, my cool mixtures. Um, lots of different combinations you can have, but I'm procrastinating. I gotta get into this painting. So let me get a paper towel in here and get to our first mixture. I wanna get up here in the mountain and start getting some snow in there. So I had a little bit of gray left over from yesterday. And if you use some either light gray or dark gray, you could probably get to that color. And I'm going to use a very delicate number one rosemary Shiraz long flat. Okay. I'm going to dip it in the turp to get a get the stiffness out of it. And now I'm going to see if I can get some of these. All these light snow things in here. And I'm going to work some of these across the top here. And I just see some smudgy stuff over on this side. And some smudges over here also. But I didn't overdo it. I, I want the dark blue to be the dominant color there. And that certainly does the trick right there. There's also a traffic sign here that I'd like to try to get to. But I think what I'd better do is think about that later. All right. There's a peony tree in here. Let me see what I can do about that. But maybe first, let's get into this barn a little bit more. I think on one side, there's a door in there, and one side is kind of horizontal and dark. And I'm going to be running some of those across there. And then just some really good dark. So I'm going to go blue, transparent oxide brown. 
and a little bit of viridian, and it's a nice dark mixture. And I see some darks in here, and some darks up in here. Getting some darks under the eave, I also see just a little bit of lighter brown in a few places, like over in here. And up in here. Okay. A little bit lighter, so I'll get a little bit of gray in there. And here we go. Not so bad. And I'll try one more stroke of that over in this area right in here. See that adds all kinds of little angles and things in there. And uh, looking pretty good. I'm going to It's a perfect detail brush today, nice and soft, and there's all kinds of nice stuff going on with it. And there's this little side shed here off to the side. I'm going to continue to reinforce him, and I need to get some... The alignment on the bottom here is not quite right, and I'm going to get a little bit of... Lift right there. That's cinders in the background, my studio cat. Going, I think I'm going to leave you alone, and she's going into the back part of the studio barn because I'm not paying attention to her. She likes to complain a lot. All right, so now I need to. Get a little bit of, I wonder if I can get a good straight bead on this knife of mine. My connoisseur, I believe, and just a little bit there. This is not my connoisseur. I don't know whose knife this is. And the reason I know that is because there's paint on the bottom of it. So I'm scraping off the paint the top and bottom of it. Because knives have to stay sharp and if they have a bunch of paint on them, they're not very sharp. I'm going back into the gray with my knife and I see some good lights across here under the barn. Went back into making some more gray. some more grays up in here. I mean, a little bit lighter gray right up in here along the fence line. Bring back some fences. They've just been lost back there. More dark. Brown, blue, green. I like this color, it's really nice. And reinforcing my fence post. And back to blue and brown. Brown, 
transparent oxide brown, ultra blue. Now a lot of people insist on putting the crossbars for the bob wire in those things. And if you're really into that, I wouldn't do it with a brush. I'd think about doing it with a, with a knife and probably kind of a light gray. Like so. Oops, Cinder's back. Stop it! Bad cat! She's digging her claws into my nice couch that I got. Okay, so I don't overdo the, the fences there. Apologize for Cinder's bad behavior. I think I'm trying to think how important these grays are in this painting. Some of them are really dark and I'm trying to see if I can capture that right value and shape with my little shiraz here. Okay, again, I think there's a pretty good dark in here too, inside the fence. And I'll try to get that in. I'm going to go back to my warms now. And I'm going to calm them down. I'm going to try first with some Naples, which is a very subtle yellow. And I'm going to work with some of those in here. You hear some mechanical noise in the background as my computer downloading yesterday's uh, part two and doing the editing. I didn't get around to editing until this morning on that. And I'm working off my um, big monitor. I, my monitor was down for a while because I changed computers and had to get the right connection to uh, go to the new computer and I've, I've got that and it's really nice. I can show it to you. And um, basically it just plugs into my computer and you can do all kinds of things to manipulate this image and to get it right. So I enjoy working off a bigger image instead of my, my little laptop. But I did it for months so it works. Now, I want to be cogent of the darks that are in here and get that going. I'm going to get back and take a look because I don't want to screw up this cute little painting. It's nice. When I pick up from the image, there's a little bit more detail in the fence cross member in a few places. So I'm going to work on that. Brown, brown, ultra blue. And as you can see between some of these guys is a some of these cross members. Fences can really be challenging if you overdo them and it looks uh, it doesn't look very professional when that happens so I've been really on myself to make sure I don't overdo fences but to get them where they're just right I see some good lights coming into the big section here of Bushes coming out of there. Yeah, I always, I'm still looking at shapes and 
wanted to get the right shapes in here. Did you see those upper strokes I did? It's just, when I have a hard edge on the bottom with snow, it, it's a little unrealistic, so I bring an up, uptick on them. Okay, let's go back to CAD Yellow Hansa. That's my strongest yellow, as you can see, that sucker is strong. And I want to bring a few of those in. And I'm delicately using the side of my brush to do that stuff. And I'm going to go back with my yellow here. And I think what we got here is a just a little bit of a sign, so I'm going to put him in. I overdid that support, so I'm getting some gray in it. Now I'll come back with the yellow again. There's also some other things that are a little, it's a little too dark. Overdone. You can tell as soon as I put these things on if the value is wrong. And you've got to take it back. I'm going to make some pink. Use some cad red medium. And I'll put some of that in here. And now some darker gray. Right in underneath here. Darker gray. I still haven't put that pine tree in, so I don't think I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to see if it's going to help this painting or not. And I need a few darker grays under here. Back to yellow. And now let's go into the snow color again. All right, white. Just add a little bit of pink and a little bit of um, royal blue. King's blue is another name for it. Pretty color. Pretty. Kind of has a glow to it. Which I really like about royal blue. And I'm being really careful to get right up to my fence post and not overrunning my fence post and softening the bottoms of some of my hard grays. All right, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee and get back and look at this. Oh la la, this is a pretty little painting. Uh, kind of loose, not too tight. Kind of tells the story. I'm going to bring a little bit of lighter blue into this dark below. So I'm going to mix some uh, royal and some cobalt. Cobalt. And royal cobalt. And I'm going to thin it down. I 
keep two things under here, my paper towels, and I also keep a rag. Sometimes when I get too much paint right up into the top of my where my uh, bristles are, I take that off with a rag. Now, I don't know if this is going to help or hurt, but I can always get my dark back. Oh, that is pretty. I'll tell you, that's pretty darn nice. And I'm going to add some ultra to this now and get some of that up in these mountains here. Now, I don't know if I'm Hollywooding this up too much or not. But back here, it just works very, very nicely. I do think I may have made this too light. So let me go back, put a little Ultra in it. A little bit more cobalt and just a little bit of royal and now try it. There we go. That's a nuts. And let's use a little bit of this up in the foreground. I mean just dots of it help out some of my sage stuff. All right. Let's go back into my royal and white, white, royal, royal. And I need to get a little bit more down in my lower sections here. And I think I need to thin this out in here, my telephone pole, like so. And I lost some of my telephone pole, so I'll go back to blue, brown, green, and bring him back. I'm going to thin down my far telephone pole and so he's not so thick on the bottom. All right, let me check my time. Oh boy, I think we're doing pretty good. So let's do a little automatic pilot here and enjoy this thing a little bit. Okay, what I see I may have Lost some of my steely gray in the background here. Maybe I overdid it. So let's go back to ultra blue. Let's get some gray in there. Gray. And get the right value. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, that does it. I got a little too bluey up here. Get a little bit of chirp in here. A little bit more gray. And let's go back to some of that snow color in the mountains. So we'll just add some white and some gray to it. In other words, not white. Yeah. 
See, there's his talking in the background. And let's go back to Steely Gray. And balance this out a little bit. And let's go darken up the foreground, just this mountain, just a little bit with some gray in it. Ultra, cobalt, gray. There we go. Let me get this a little bit fixed up here. And we'll get this also over on this side too. A little bit darker, a little bit more gray, ultra, cobalt, I can get this, I can get a little darker over here. And lighten it up in a few places, blue. See, I went off the reservation and I had to make a few corrections. And I need to get some smudges down here as to... where this foreground mountain is. Alright, one more get back and look before I sign this thing. I think it's good. Okay. One more shot at the foreground. Right in here. Boom, 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 boom. And there's some grays that come out here too. Darker. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Done. Shoo. Man. Oh, golly. All right. That brings us to the end of North Park Ranch. Thanks so much. This has been a great little adventure. I hope you enjoyed as much as I have, and happy painting, and I'll see you next week with another one, okay? Bye-bye.